Welcome to episode 54 of the BCF ORG podcast, The Business of Business. I'm Brian Fisher. In the previous episode, 53, our guest was Chris Smith, marketing and advertising expert. This podcast series focuses on the various subjects and topics to help you run a successful, profitable business. They're approximately 10 to 15 minutes long, so you can listen while commuting. Hopefully, you'll find one or two takeaways to implement per episode. Today's episode covers professional sales. Our guest is Paul Ross, CEO Head Trainer of Subtle Words That Sell, based out of San Diego, California. Paul's on a passionate mission to guide already successful sales professionals and entrepreneurs to radically up-level their sales results. He's an author, speaker, elite sales trainer, master hypnotist, and master practitioner of neuro-linguistic programming. Over the past 30 years, he's guided tens of thousands of people to use the power of words to design their own results. Let's welcome Paul Ross. Paul, welcome to the BCF ORG podcast, The Business of Business. Thank you, Brian. Paul, I'm always interested in people's stories. What's your background in becoming CEO, head trainer of Subtle Words That Sell? I originally started as a men's charisma enhancement coach. I was a guy who couldn't get a date. And through learning neurolinguistic programming, I began to, as a gangly six foot two, 135 pound, 28, 29 year old nerdy virgin, actually get my first girlfriend. And I thought, wow, I can learn to is to create a business. So I actually, under another name, created a whole online community about this, an entire subculture, covered in a book called The Game, written by Neil Strauss. In any case, I learned, wait a minute, I can apply these same things to sales and to sales training and to business and really take an outside-the-box view. So if you're inside of a, a field of endeavor, you're stuck with the assumption into that field of endeavor. Because I came from outside of that box, I have unique ways of looking at the sales process that are completely off the wall. I've been told that my methods are bat really crazy, but what I'll offer to you and to your listening audience is this. It's the very ways of thinking and feeling and responding that stand so far outside of what you're used to doing that bear the potential to bring you results that are so far outside of what you're used to enjoying. What's the one thing that you're actually always selling, no matter what your industry or business? This is, again, a very unique perspective. I think, first and foremost, you're not selling your product or service, and you're not selling yourself. You're selling decisions and good feelings about decisions. So we need to understand, nowadays, our clients, our customers, however you want to phrase it, don't trust their ability to make good decisions. Yes, it's important for people to know, like, and trust you. But nowadays, because people are so overwhelmed with so many choices and so many options and so many inputs coming their way, so now we have to sell them on the decision that they can make good decisions. I know that's sort of stacking one abstract thing upon the other. So you're always selling decisions and good feelings about decisions. When you look at it that way, then it leads to other conclusions that are not typical. Well, what are the four words you can use in the first minute of your sales presentation to create immediate, unbreakable rapport and trust? Those words are we, our, together, share, and invite. So let me give you a specific example. I would say something if I was going to, I sell a lot from stage and I also sell from video and I teach people how to write their videos. I would say something if I was doing a face-to-face -face presentation. Before I begin this presentation, I'd like to ask you to please ask any questions you have, blah, 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 blah. I would say this, before we begin our exploration together today, I just want to invite you to please share the questions that naturally arise when a great decision is being made. So let's, let's look at these words. I call them implied relationship words. Let's look at the first word, we. We, again, implies a relationship, doesn't it? Before we begin this exploration. Let's look at the word exploration. For every exploration, there must be a leader. And for every leader, Brian, there must be a what? A follower. Exactly. So it's implying on the subconscious level that they are your followers, which is even better than trusting you. Following you is even better. Before we begin, 
our exploration. Our, again, is another word. It implies it's something we're doing together. Not, I'm going to show you this presentation, which is something you're doing to someone. Before we begin our exploration together, together is another implied relationship where you're doing something together. Before we begin our exploration together of this opportunity today, I just want to invite you. An invitation is something of perceived value that one person is extending to another. We're stacking all these positively charged emotional words. And finally, I said, I just want to invite you to please share. I didn't say invite you to ask the questions, share the questions. It's very subtle distinctions, but subtle is powerful. So I invite you to share the question that naturally arise when a great decision is being made. So here's a rule of the mind, a rule of the subconscious mind. The law of compound suggestion says each suggestion you give increases the power of the previous one and sets up subconscious mind for the next one. They build and multiply. Another rule is when you stack three positively charged emotional words, words with strong positive emotions, if you stack three of them or more together, the subconscious mind must surrender, must release. And to me, selling is not just about leadership. It's about suggestion. Because if the only thing you're doing is setting a direction for your clients and not using the power of suggestion, then their old habits, their old ways of thinking, their old self-doubts, their old confusions are going to come up. So it's only through the power of suggestion that you can get around that. Notice that last bit of that phrase, a great decision is being made. Did I say who's making the great decision? Did I say when the great decision is going to be made? Did I even say what the great decision will be? I'm being vague. And when you're vague, the unconscious mind has to dive down and come up with a meaning that makes sense. And so right then and there, in the beginning of the discussion, I'm filling in that gap of them not trusting themselves through the power of suggestion. One, two, three, four, bam, bam, bam. Like a Mike Tyson of sales. Mike Tyson, when he was in his prime, if you remember him, he would hit with combinations and he didn't have just one punch. He would bam, 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 bam. By the way, I teach all of this word for word in my Invisible Influence series. Everything I'm talking about today, if you're interested in finding it word for word in a series of five reports, they'll teach you how to crush objections teach you how to keep a positive mindset in the face of rejection, teach you how to use these five words. If you want to grab that and find yourself really thinking, yeah, I want that, you can text the word COMPEL, C-O-M-P-E-L, to 411321. That's COMPEL, to 411321. If you're outside of the United States, you can use WhatsApp and text the word COMPEL to 1-909-741. One, three, two, one. We're speaking with Paul Ross, CEO, head trainer of Subtle Words That Sell. Paul, what is the first thing about your prospect you must focus on and take into consideration if you want to skyrocket your sales? Again, what state of consciousness do we want them in? Do we want them fascinated, clear-minded, focused? This is a real big one. But one of your number one challenges to making a sale is not your competition. And it's not your own motivation. What it is, is simply overwhelming confusion. If you've got a cell phone, in fact, I invite everyone to grab their cell phone, open it up and notice all the apps you have that send you messages. You've got Twitter, Facebook, Instant Messenger, TikTok. I can't even name them all, Brian. So your client is coming in. They've got the next shiny object syndrome. So you've really got to get them focused. How do we create these states of focus? Even if your client or prospect is interested in what you have, that's no guarantee they'll be able to focus on your proposition on what it is you have to offer. We can no longer assume focus. Nowadays, I remember when YouTube first came into being, the ads were two minutes long. Now the ads are 15 seconds. You get 15 seconds to click off. So we really need to consider how do we create those states of focus and our clients, and our prospects. In a sense, this is really wild and whacked out. And again, that bleep crazy. Look at sales as creating. It's not just about getting your ideas into your prospect's mind. It's also about expanding their mind to include your ideas. 
So how do you help people double the power of their sales presentations? Use those five words I gave you. So you're creating not just trust in you, not just rapport, because rapport has dangers. So one of the things we also have to do, Brian, is how do we create a state of mind for ourselves so we walk in relaxed and confident, even though we don't know what's going to happen? How do we find that right state of confidence? In any sale, how you show up is 50% of the success. How do you show up in a field that's inherently, by its very nature, is chaotic and uncertain? We all know a deal or a sale can fall through for any reasons that are outside of our control. Maybe we're having a bad day. Maybe we fought with our significant other. Maybe we just got a big traffic ticket. How do we create a state of mind that's realistically enthusiastic and intelligently motivated? So notice what I said. I'm not talking about filling yourself with, yes, hurrah, 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 hurrah. How do we create that state of balanced, focused, grounded? I teach champions. I tend to teach people who are already at the top of their game or people who are close and are really dedicated to getting there. How do you stay? Champions are invested in their skills and just interested in the sale. The champions, they're prepared and ready to make the sale, but ultimately they're joyfully invested in their skills because they know it's constant improvement of the skills that over the long pull will bring the results. So that's part of the state of mind you want to go into where you're not attached to the outcome. You desire the outcome, but you're process oriented. We're speaking with Paul Ross, CEO, head trainer of Subtle Words That Sell. Paul, is there anything I haven't asked that you'd like to add? Yes, there is something. I'll preface it by saying this. There are a lot of good sales trainings out there. Nothing I'm talking about today, if you have a sales process or you've taken some trainings, what I am saying is they're probably incomplete. And what you're doing is probably not going to continue to get the results that are exponentially better. If you only want an incremental increase, then stick with what you're already doing. But to get an exponential increase, to get 30, 40% improvement over a 90-day or six-month period, I know that sounds badly crazy. That's why I give away the Invisible Influence Series. I give away free stuff because your best proof is your own results. So I just really, really want to speak to that fact that you have to be able to walk in and control your own state. How do you develop that detachment from the results, but stay motivated? Because if you can't do that, the minute something doesn't go your way, you're going to fall flat on your face or you'll pump yourself up with fake enthusiasm. You'll get to these peak states. Tony Robbins talks about peak states. Problem is they take a lot of energy. Number one, they take a lot of energy. They're exhausting. Number two, what if your client or prospect isn't in a peak state? You'll blow them out of the water. You'll destroy any possibility of healthy rapport. It's very useful if you're in front of an audience of 30,000 people like Tony is. Okay, I get it. You need to be in a peak state or you won't have the energy. But otherwise, it's a danger. So what is the right state we design for ourselves that actually works, allows us to learn from every experience? This is something that every other training that I've seen is lacking. One of the things that makes my trainings unique. So, Brian, you've heard the phrase, learn from every experience. Does anyone ever give you a process or a method to do that? No. And that's unique to my coaching and training is I give you a process to learn from every experience. It's tested. It's field proven. It's works in the real world. Because if all anyone tells you is just learn from that experience, but they don't give you a methodology, only when you have a good learning strategy that you have genuine confidence, you can walk into that situation and you'll either get what you want or you'll joyfully and accurately learn what you need to get what you want or better. Paul, how can people get in contact with you? It's easy. Text the word COMPEL, C-O-M-P-E-L, to 411-321. If you're outside of the U.S., then text the word COMPEL to 1-909-741-1321. And I strongly recommend you use WhatsApp to do that. And we'll get that right out to you. You get one like every five days. So it's spaced out. Go and apply what's in there and you'll see immediate results. It's the only way I can get people to decide for yourself, okay, you want to move further along with me because this is such outrageous, bat bleep, crazy stuff. You need to try it out for yourself. 
Thank you for joining us today on the BCFORG podcast, The Business of Business, Paul. You're welcome. My sincere thanks to Paul Ross for being our guest. Managing the performance of your company is one of the most important things you do as a leader. This podcast is on over 20 directories. Subscribe or follow wherever you get your podcast. In search, type BCFORG. Be sure to leave a space between BCF and ORG. Feel free to share this podcast with people who you think may benefit. A strong rating of these podcasts would be appreciated. If you'd like to reach out to me with any questions, comments, ideas, or potentially be a guest like Paul, please go to bcforg.com. There's a red Contact Us button in the middle of the homepage. A LinkedIn symbol's on the upper right. Click on that if you'd like to see my profile. All the podcasts are available by clicking on the website podcast page in the reference bar. These podcasts will be released the first and third Tuesday each month. In the next episode, 55, our guest will be Mark Bashirs discussing financial security. In business, running a successful, profitable business is the ultimate scorecard. You are never done and can always be better. It tends to be more fun than work, frustrating at times, but can be very rewarding. From BCF ORG Corp., I'm Brian Fisher, wishing you the best. Thanks. Thanks.